All right, so um, welcome to getting started with Zotero. Um, so we're, we are, um, if I can do the share my screen correctly. <laughs> um, let's see. All right, so um, we're gonna go over today kind of the, um, what I hope are the, just like the basic basics for using Zotero. Um, I will send, this is just a handful of slides, um, but there are some links on it. So I will send them as a PDF to everyone um, at the end of the, at the end of the um, session. Um, if you have questions, I would say, um, since there are a lot of us um, as we go, if you want to, I'll do my best to monitor the chat, but we will do Q&A at the end. So just, um, you know, if you want to throw them in the chat so that you remember them and I'll take a look at them a little, little bit later, um, or, you know, you can raise your hand. Um, so we're just going to kind of go over what Zotero is, um, some of the basics of getting it set up and then adding items to your library. Um, organizing your library, and then I'll kind of walk you through using the Microsoft Word plugin. Um, so I wanted to just start with kind of a um, just an overview of what Zotero is and why you might want to use it. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah. That would be awesome. Um, so I started using Zotero as a graduate student about probably 12 years ago now. Um, and at the time, my options were the old RefWorks, which if you have, if you looked at it before the upgrade was pretty clunky and pretty difficult to use. Um, and then there were some paid things like EndNote was available. Um, there was something called Bookends for Mac, which I don't even know if that exists anymore. Um, and Zotero is free. It has pretty much all of the, uh, features of the paid bibliographic management uh, programs. Um, it is, um, you, you can pay for upgraded storage like in their cloud, but I never have. I've always stored all of my files locally or now I store them in box and have kind of a setup where I can access them from multiple computers, um, which is more of an advanced feature. So I'd be happy to help you with that if that's something you wanna set up, but I'm not really gonna go over it today. Um, it's not tied to your UA accounts, which I think can be a, an advantage, um, especially if you're a graduate student. Um, it works really well with all kinds of sources. So it's especially good if you're using less traditional sources and I'll show you kind of how to save something from a social media site, um, from various web sources. The, the, the browser plugin is very good at kind of uh, recognizing different types of sources and what they what they are and grabbing the right information. Um, it supports collaboration, so you can create group libraries. In order to do that, you do have to create an account on their site, but that's free. Um, and then you can create like a private library that you, if you just want to collaborate with one or two people or add your research assistant, or you can, you know, create a shared library if, if you want to do like some kind of public scholarship or, um, you know, any other, any other thing you might want to do to share your work. Um, and it integrates with workflows across disciplines. So I'm going to be, I'm myself most familiar with how it works in humanities and social sciences, because that's where I use it. But I know that, um, Vince Galfani, our chemistry librarian, um, mentioned to me, I'm not, I don't think he's here, um, that he uses it um, with latex. Um, so if you are um, kind of interested in some of those applications, um, I can put you in touch with him. Um, so I'm just gonna start with, you know, getting started and getting set up. Um, so, uh, to, you can download Zotero, you just download it straight from their website. And it's important to know that you want to download both the software itself and the Zotero connector that's going to be a plugin for your browser. Um, and that should install automatically. It will also, the, the download package should include the Microsoft Word extension. Um, and once you in install the connector, um, you can see it up 
in my browser here. It's, I hope that's probably a little bit difficult to see, but it's it's this button that I I put it right there. Um, so this says like save to Zotero when it when it pops up, and um, that icon tells me that it recognizes this as a web page. And I'll show you kind of how that works, but that's kind of where that lives, and it's the most efficient way to add your um, to add your sources like while you're while you're working. Um, I'm gonna log in so I can access my. I'll be showing you in my in in house, you know, in my local library, but I can have this so that it is on in their cloud. So I could access this via the web from anywhere if I wanted to update it or do anything. And you will see I have um, here, here is my library, which I have created an empty folder um, for the workshop because I'll show you kind of adding some things. So, um, so that's kind of the basics. I have like my main library here and then I have a bunch of subfolders that I've organized and reorganized. And that's kind of the main way that I, um, that I sort of find things and use things. So I've created an empty folder here. And um, I'll start just by showing you a couple of different ways to add items and kind of just give you an idea of the functionality. So I've pulled up um, a few, oh, I've pulled up some articles just in a few different places that I know that are pretty commonly used. So I have a journal article in Scout. Um, and so as I am doing this, Zotero has to be started up and I wanna be clicked into the folder that I wanna put things. I can switch that if I want to um, when I do this. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna click add to Zotero and it tells, it pops up and it says it's saving to workshop. Um, with JSTOR, it won't automatically add the PDF because JSTOR makes you like verify that you are not like, you know, uh, a bot. So if it can automatically pull in a PDF, it will. I had the opportunity there to click and move my item, but now I can click over to Zotero and here it is. So I have, um, I click, you know, I select my item and then on the right hand pane, make that a little bigger. Um, I have the item type, it's a journal article. So I can go in here and check, you know, if, if it pulled data incorrectly or if it put something in the wrong place. I find generally with JSTOR, it's really consistent and accurate, um, you know, but I might want to add, like, is there a journal abbreviation? Um, this will save for me a, U, a stable URL. So as long as I'm clicked into, you know, as long as I'm logged in, I can get back to this quickly. And then I will, for this one, let me, I'm gonna accept and download the item and I'm just gonna throw it on my desktop. And then what I can do is, oops, Siri just wanted to help me with something. <laughs> Uh, so what I can do is now I have this, um, I have this file and I can go here and attach it. So I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a link to the file. So what that's going to do is, um, I'm going to do modified, I'm going to open this. So what that's going to do is that's going to leave the file where it is on my desktop and it's gonna attach it to this item. So now I can click here and I can open the file. Um, I use a plugin called Zotfile, which I have set up so that when I right click and I go to manage attachments and I say rename, it's gonna do two things for me. One thing it's gonna do is it's going to name the file based on the metadata. So based on the, the information about the article with the you know authors in the year and the title. The other thing that it's gonna do is it's gonna move the file to where I want it to live, which is in a box folder. Um, so I have that, again, I'm, I'm not gonna go over that setup, 
it's just because it's a little weird and complicated. Um, and it's something that I'm happy to help you all with. So Zotfile is a third party plugin. One of the great, good things about using Zotero is it is um, it's open source. So people have developed all of these different plugins and extensions that can help you do different things. And Zotfile work, helps you manage your PDF files or manage your attachments. Um, the other thing that you, the other thing you can do, and this is another actually cool function that Zotfile has. So in this section here, I can take notes. So I can add a note. I have a little rich text editor, you know, and I can put whatever I want in there. Um, you know, I can put quotes in. I can do whatever I want. If I and I'll just show this. So if I use like a PDF markup, you know, and I highlight a few things and, you know, I don't know, add a note, you know, add like a little add a text note that I'm gonna stick in the margin. And I save it, is that file also does a cool thing for me where if I um, again manage attachments and extract annotations, um, it will put the things I highlighted and my note should put my note. Oh, it didn't put my note. Um, if you use the pop up notes, I think it works. So it puts, but it puts what I highlighted right into a note for me. So that's like a really useful feature so that you kind of have some interoperability between like. You know, if you're reading in a PDF reader, um, like on your tablet, and then you save it and you can extract that. So, um, let's see. Um, oh, Sarah says that she's occasionally experienced messy JSTOR metadata. Yeah, but it's usually the case of a title or author in all caps or something else easy to alter. So that is one thing to know is that the, whatever gets pulled into your article info is however this was entered in the database. So if it's in the database in all caps, then you're going to have to correct that. Um, and that's what I, often what I mean about like double checking the data because it might be has some weird formatting often when I pull things in from a library catalog it gives me kind of some weird uh, punctuation because of the way titles especially book titles get added get entered in the library catalogs so let's see this is a I'm actually gonna hold on a let's see let's get let's look at a book Help to change my search parameters. So I had this all set up, but I didn't pull up a book. Okay. So I'm going to pull up um, this ebook and I'm going to save it in my in my Zotero library. So one thing that when you're using Scout you will find that it looks like it's going to think it's a website. Usually it will figure out in the process of saving it that it's a book. So I have this little book icon. Um, it is not going to pull in the full text of the book, I don't think. Um, well, it might actually. So that just like should be automatically what it's doing. Um, and whether it pulls in the full text depends a little bit on the permissions. So this must be a must not be a DRM protected ebook, which is why I was able to pull in the full text. But you'll notice like here, um, because of the way that we enter uh, items in library catalogs, there's a space um, before the colon. So I'm going to fix that. Um, it's just like, it's usually just kind of some stuff like that. And then I can just double check, you know, is it the right kind of item? Um, you know, where is it? Where does it? Is it stored? If you pull in things from Scout, it will always list the library catalog, which is the database, as EBSCO host. So if you are using Scout and you find like a JSTOR article, um, you may want to go to the JSTOR item, if that makes sense. 
So um, if, if that is like, if you, especially if you're using MLA and it matters what database you got it from for your citations, um, you can either go down here and just update that manually or use the full text finder, use the PDF, you know, the database link and go to the, um, go to the bot, go to the, go to the articles landing page there. Um, just, uh, you know, so this will pull in again, it's pulling in this is so this is from the Washington Post, this might, um, yeah, this identified this as a web page. So I probably am going to want to go and make this a newspaper article. And um, it still saves the URL so I can go to it and get back to it. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you just because I think is if you are a researcher doing work where you are capturing social media, um, Zotero is particularly useful. So if I want to capture this tweet using the plugin, um, I can go here. It'll should save the link. I'm gonna it's possible I changed my preferences. Um, one of the defaults, I don't even realize how I changed this. So first thing, it's going to identify this as a blog post, um, but it kind of, un, it, uh, that this is how it will sort of construct a, a tweet. So the title is, as you would say, a tweet, it's the entire tweet. Um, the blog title is the user's name, the website type is it's a tweet and it saves the URL for you. Um, one of the things that it should be doing, and I'm actually not sure why mine isn't, <laughs> um, but it usually does, is it will save, it will automatically screenshot and attach the screenshot to your citation in Zotero. So if you are especially doing something, if maybe you're researching like, a big controversial subject that's on Twitter where people might be starting to delete their tweets. So you can kind of get the receipts and keep them <laughs> there. Um, and that will add, that is, um, I'm, I'm genuinely not sure why my Zotero isn't doing that for me. And it actually might be that I told it not to and I forgot to switch it back. Um, Cause it will do that generally for any web page. Um, and I must have decided I didn't need it at some point. So, um, that's kind of getting things into your library. Um, one of the things that you, you, you have a couple of different ways to organize. So you can see I have folders here. Zotero calls this collections. I can add a sub collection. So if I right click, I can make a new folder and say, you know, whatever, call it whatever I want. And now it's there and I can, you know, move things from here. I usually just drag and drop. And now that's in there. Um, I also have the option of using tags. And so I don't think any of my, uh, my <laughs> examples here did this. Um, so often when you pull things in from a database, it will pull in any subject headings. So like if you go from the library catalog, any of the Library of Congress subject headings that are tagged um, on that entry will get added automatically as tags. So like if you look at my personal library, you can see here that I have, um, you know, a whole lot of like, honestly weird looking <laughs> um, and potentially like redundant tags. Um, they can be useful. A lot of things like, and a lot of these have like one item attached to them or a handful of items. And I have like, hundreds and hundreds of items in my library. So for me personally, I don't find this to be the most useful way of organizing, but I've never in any tool really been particularly good at using tags very effectively. So that may just be me. Um, and I have used it in some ways, like I have these two read and read tags um, that I can, I've actually assigned. So when I assign, oops, I didn't mean to do that. I, when I assigned a color, um, I also assigned it a number. And so if I have an item selected and I hit the number two, um, it will now tag it with the red tag that says I read it. 
Um, so I do that. I use that sometimes to sort of organize things within folders to say like this, I definitely want to read this or I put this in here because I need to read it or to sort of just keep track of what I have looked at and what I haven't. So you can use it like that. I think um, there are a lot of there are a lot of ways that I probably haven't thought about <laughs> to uh, use tags in here. Um, and it's really, I mean, honestly, the sky's the limit. I'm sure that if I wanted to put in some time and get like more, you know, get really organized, I could do it. Um, but I, that hasn't, that hasn't seemed to me, um, I mostly sort of organized by collections and then within that um, subfolders and it within that, if, if I'm looking for something specific, the key, I find the keyword searching just like, you know, like, pretty effective. That's only searching in one area, right? But this is, I am gonna have a whole lot of stuff or not, you know, so I can kind of pull like, I know, um, you know, these things are gonna pull things from titles, from my notes, um, you know, that's a thing where I'm like, oh, I might want to add a, a tag for that item if there's going to be more stuff. So, but you kind of, you get the idea, like there's a lot of ways that you can sort of use this to your advantage. Um, it can get a little messy, but, but I do, again, kind of find the, um, you know, find this like pretty effective. Um, and I just looked at my notes and realized that I forgot to, um, regarding adding items to your library. You also have the option, like if you have a physical book, um, and you don't want to, you, you can go here and like add a book and just put everything in manually, oops. Um, but you don't have to do that. Oops, I have to delete it. Um, you can also use this little magic wand guy and add an ISBN or a DOI or a PubMed ID um, and it will pull everything in that it needs. So that's another kind of way for you to do that, do it pretty efficiently. Um, you know, you can add, you can pull books from Amazon. It's very, um, very user friendly, I think. Um, let's see, I'm actually gonna pause for a second because I'm gonna switch to kind of using the plugin, generating a bibliography. Um, so I did wanna ask if there were questions before I move on to looking at kind of using this with Microsoft Word. Hi, Sarah, this is Saad. Thank Hi. you very much for this yeah. presentation. Uh, I have a question. I was trying to download the one you told you told us about. I think it's through Safari or something. And it showed the page. Can I share it with you? Yeah, hold on a minute. I, I think you can show it. <laughs> Just to, uh -huh. to make sure we, we understand this very well. Yeah. Uh, it showed, I think, it showed this page. Show, so how can we... Oh, let me see. So I'll bring, um, it, I'll bring it back. Uh, so okay. I, I, I clicked on this. And then where should I go from there? Um, so it looks like it looks like that actually the problem is with Safari that um actually I didn't realize this. I haven't used Safari in a long time. And um Let's see, so it looks like. Shall we do like uh, Google or something else? Or? Yeah, I would look at, um, I would I would use Chrome, I guess. Um, it looks like there's maybe like a beta, there's like, an, there's a version of it, but it seems like it's Safari isn't supporting extensions in the same way. Um, mm -hmm. I, can, I can try to find a little more information about that. Um, sure, sure. But, no yeah, I'm actually not sure. Thanks for for telling me that. I didn't even think to double check that. It Sarah, do you work. think um, the file mm -hmm. went into his download? Do you think the file went into your downloads file? And because it looks like the install piece went onto your computer, and you're gonna have to yeah there and open oh, it. Oh yeah, so it's the beta. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I clicked. I clicked on this. Uh huh. And Uh, and it asked me to move this to this one, and I did. Mm -hmm. 
but but uh, I don't know about the safari if it's gonna work or not. So I uh -huh. I'm honestly not sure, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I can't fine. That's fine. Right I mean, I can, I, that's fine. I can play around with it, and then if I okay. have questions, I can go to the library check with you there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, let's see. A couple of questions in the chat. Oh, okay. Um, oh, Jennifer asks, um, do you have to use Chrome? So it definitely, it should work in Chrome and Firefox. Um, so if you use one of those, you should be fine. Um, I used to use it in Safari. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, what happened with that, but let's see. Um, if they say, I, you know, I don't want to spend too much time kind of looking for this. Um, but I can, I will definitely, if you have questions, um, you know, I can, I can help you out. Um, oh, okay. So I'm out of space to store my files in Zotero. Do you have to pay for an upgrade? Is there an advantage to using Mendeley or EndNote since those offer more storage? Um, so I have never, so you have a couple of options in terms of, in terms of storage, um, in Zotero and like how you're, um, using it. So I personally never bothered to like get an upgraded storage, um, like account, it just didn't seem worth it <laughs> to me. Um, because I, because it mostly I was working on my own personal computer and I could just keep um, all of my files locally. And so when I go to, hold on, let me share my screen again. <clears throat> so when I go like and log in, you know, to my profile here, I have my whole library here, but I don't have all of my PDFs. Um, and I have solved the problem, <coughs> excuse me, of needing to pay for upgraded storage by storing my files in as linked files in a box folder. So then I have them wherever I am and I have, this is my personal laptop. And when I am at my computer in the library, I have that's set up to link to the same box folder with a different file path. Um, you can, I mean, I think that if, you know, if you want kind of a little bit more ease, um, you don't want to deal with that, which I, 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 myself, I frankly didn't find that to be too big of a deal to kind of, once I got it set up, it wasn't, it was a pretty easy thing to do. Um, but that might be an advantage of, Mendeley or um, <clears throat> of Mendeley, sorry, or EndNote, um, because that is, um, because that does have that. Um, so it looks like you're building this from database or searching stage of research as opposed to after you've written a paper um, in working with a re reference list, would you recommend that Zotero is most helpful when you're first gathering literature for a project as opposed to building the database after the fact. Definitely. Um, I think that it's a really effective tool for just keeping and organizing your items. And a lot of what, like the way that I have used it is I'll use it at the like gathering stage. And then once I have a bunch of stuff, I'll put, I'll like pull it into some folders to say, okay, this is what I'm actually using. Um, so for me, that's that's been a useful way to keep track of it. And that probably comes partly because when I started using it was when I was studying for my quals. And so that was kind of my initial use of it was I'm gathering all of this, all of these, you know, all of these sources that I'm figuring out what my reading list is. Um, I do, um, Sarah, do you have anything to add about like how you've added a database or added literature um, after the fact? Yeah, so I'm actually in the process of doing that right now because I'm working on an article with a co-author. And so I hadn't, we hadn't set up anything in Zotero with it. We had just been sticking our citations into footnotes. So I just went through and found all of them. I, I actually just did title searches in like 
Google Scholar and in WorldCat and pulled the records from there using the, the Chrome extension. But I just went through all of our footnotes and and pulled things. And then um, as we're, we've just been working in this really messy Google Doc. And as we're moving into, right, right now we're formalizing things in Word and we're getting getting ready to, I've been struggling with the site and write. So that's what I'm really interested in getting <laughs> to. Um, specifically on the bibliography side, but like, that's the part that I'm trying to practice at the moment. Building the library is no problem. Um, but yeah, that's kind of been my workflow. Like if you're working on something, I also have in the past, like as I'm reading things and I want to keep track of them, like if I'm just reading an article, I've, mm -hmm. I've gone through as I'm reading an article and like pulled things into a folder that's like, to read or research on this thing. Um, so I would say that I've found it useful there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, you can um, definitely pull things in, um, you know, once you've written the paper and are working on a reference list, it's a little, it's, it's some work at, it's some work on the front end to do that. But if you want to do, if you want to like use the, the, the Microsoft Word plugin yeah. um, because you know you might have to like switch styles or you want to be able to like, as Dawn is pointing out in the chat, um, once you have everything connected, if you make a change in your manuscript um, where you say like delete a source um, or add a source, it will automatically update your references. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it may depend a little bit on how you, how you want to work and what feels most useful to you. Um, you know, I will say the last time I kind of worked on a big long project with Zotero, I wound up not using the plugin. Um, I was using a program called Scrivener to write and um, Scrivener yeah, does not okay. have the plugin, <laughs> which is a bummer. <laughs> um, but for me, it was, it was okay. Like it was, it was a good organization tool and I could still actually generate a work cited and I'll pop over. That's a good segue mm -hmm. to um, show you. So one of the things that you can do, um, I'm going to open up a document. One of the things as you're, you're, as you're oh, doing yeah. that, I wanted to make one more comment yeah. um, towards George's question. Um, I've used a lot of Zotero public libraries like groups. And I think there's not any, there's not any connection to a scholarly article or any kind of writing project or even a research project as much as just using it as a shared bibliography and opening that up for, for other people to be able to add things to as more of an archive of ideas and resources on mm -hmm. a topic. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that you can do in Zotero without, without having to do any sort of Microsoft Word plugin, anything, is you can take, so I'm going to use this folder, and I'm going to write, if I right click, one of my options is create a bibliography from the collection. And it will pop up and ask me what style I want, and I will tell it, I will tell it copy to clipboard, okay, and then I can just paste into my document. So that's one thing that you can do if you if you if the plugin if using the plugin feels cumbersome or you don't want to put in the front end work, you can still kind of organize all of this your 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 sources into a folder and they will you can generate a bibliography from them and that can save you, you know, quite a lot of just work on the on just on the labor of doing that and um you know, it'll be, it is, it's this, it's updated regularly. So it should, um, you know, you should be getting the most recent, um, you know, the most recent citation formats um, that you, you know, that you, that you're using. So it should be, you know, updated and accurate as much as we can expect anything like this to be. So that's one way that you could do that is you can just really easily copy and paste. You can also, um, you know, I can just drag and drop if I just want like, one of these things, if I just grab this and go over here, I can drag and drop. And I have my default set um, in my 
so if I were to, I, I set that up in my, oops, sorry, too many things on too small of a screen. <laughs> Um, if I go to my Zotero preferences up here, this is where I would do this. Um, so this is quick copy. This is where I drag and drop and I can tell it I want my format to be MLAH and it will just do that for me. So that's a really kind of quick, especially if you want to like just email somebody a citation, you know, you can just go grab it from your library and drag it over. Um, Where's my Word document? There we go. No, nope, that's my email. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, quit that. So I am going to just go to a new page so that we're looking at this cleanly. So one of the things um, that Zotero should um, install automatically the the plugin for Microsoft Word. So it's, I'm going to go up here um, and I'm going to pick Zotero. And so, you know, um, I have, I'm going to put my, you know, I'm going to have my, my citation. Um, and then when I want to add a citation, I'm going to go add edit citation. And this is going to pop up again. Um, it's going to tell me, you know, I'm going to just keep it for MLA 8, but I can do whatever I want. And then I can search. So, you know, um, I might just grab, oh, I'm sorry, I messed that up. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> I'm going to add a citation. Um, and so now this is here. So I am going to say like, okay, I want this on their own. And now it's going to pop up like here's things that match this. So I'm going to pick that. Um, if I want to add a page, I'm just going to click on this, you know, I'm going to add whatever page. If I want to add additional text that is like part of this note, um, either before or after, I can do that here. Um, and then I'm going to click out of it and just hit enter. And oh no, so Tarot experienced an error updating my document. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh no. That's a great time to discover this. <laughs> um, I'm going to try it one more time. Um, but I might have to just have a second, um, I might just have to have another workshop, which is fine. So I'm going to add my page. I'm going to hit enter. Oh, there it worked. So now I have an MLA H citation. Um, and I'm going to add my period. And, you know, if I once I do that, I can say, if I want to add another quote, um, I'm going to search. And so now I will see as these things come up in my library that I have things I've already cited as well as other things that match my search criteria. So if I want to search this and something that I've noticed is the way that the author's name was entered in here is formatting it, um, you know, page and where did it go? There it went. Um, I'll hit enter. And so now um, what it should do is, right, it'll, it'll generate the right kind of citation. Um, what I have noticed actually is in here, um, it looks like the way that it pulled the author's name in is it pulled it all in in one field. So I, this is, might be a little hard to see, um, but I can switch this so that it's two fields and now it's last name, first name and it should update. Oops. Oh, I did not mean to do that. There we go. I'm going to hit update field. And it, sh it should fix that. 
and I'm not, I'm honestly not sure why it's not fixing it. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the, the real time of doing your, um, doing your citations in, in your, there we go. So now it updated it. It took a second. So now instead of giving me the author's full name, it gave me just her last name. Um, and if I want to, I can, um, let's see. I want to edit citations. Oh, right. If I want to change styles, um, I don't know what I just did. Document preferences. That's not what I want. So I can change styles <laughs> and I'm having trouble doing it um, because I don't remember, because I thought I remembered how to do this. And um, now I am having trouble doing this. So um, why is this doing this? You're hitting the right button. Your okay. computer is doing something funny. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you everyone for bearing with me. Um, I need to, um, I'm actually gonna, I think just, well, so what, what should happen is I should be able to just change my preferences <laughs> and change it to, so instead of MLA eight, I can make it Chicago and it'll give me footnotes. Um, I'm sorry that I'm having trouble actually showing you <laughs> how to do that. Um, but uh, one of the things that I did want to point out, and this, this is a thing, especially if you're changing a long document, is that it will not um, change your punctuation. So if I am in MLA 8 and I have my, you know, my punctuation outside, my, in closing my um, citation, and then I change this to a footnote, um, it's going to put the footnote in the same position. So it'll be, um, it won't like the footnote will have a space and the period will be in the wrong place. Um, I am not sure if there's a way to really remedy that. Um, there might be using like the, the prefix and the um, suffix, like in, if I were to like edit citation, if I were to go here, there might be a way to do that. As I'm thinking, I'm totally thinking out loud here, though, so I'm not, um, I'm not positive about that. But it is nonetheless way less work to go fix your punctuation than to like convert all of your in-text citations to notes, for example, um, or convert the format of all of your notes or something like that. So um, that is, I think that's about everything. Um, I, I want to like see if, yeah, I don't know why this isn't working. Uh, <laughs> I will um, probably um, be able to like put together a, like a tutorial, like a video tutorial for this as well, um, or find one that is already made. So I'm not reinventing the wheel. Um, but we have about 10 minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions, All right. Um, so if there are no questions, um, and I'm happy to stick around for a couple minutes, but um, I am going to go ahead and stop the recording.